there is ample technology available today to seamlessly integrate data from your website to other applications. And we can do so by using various APIs. Now in this example, I need to have the ability to integrate a very simple appointment booking form on my website with my Google Calendar. With ByteNet's form builder and the APIs available on the Google Cloud Platform, you can do exactly that. In this video, I'll show you two examples. The first is a simple form with various fields that will capture the booking information and write it to a calendar entry in your Google Calendar. The second, where I use a combination of the first form but also incorporate the built-in booking functionality with ByteNet Forms to write the booking information into a form database on the website as well as write it to the Google Calendar entry. Hi again, this is Peter in partnership with ByteNet bringing you another ByteNet add-ons tutorial and today I'll show you how to build a form on your website and then use the Google Calendar API to integrate your booking with your Google Calendar. Now it's important to note that even though this tutorial covers the form builder functionality with Pytnet add-ons for Elementor, Pytnet also has a standalone WordPress plugin named Pytnet Forms and it is compatible with any page builder. Both of these have a free version that you can download from the WordPress repository but to get the maximum power and to use the functionality described in this video, you'll need the pro version. Let's get started. To use this functionality, you'll need a couple of things from the Google API. So first off, I'm going to head over to the back end of my website, down to Pytnet add-ons and into the settings, and you'll find a section for Google Calendar integration. Now here I'll need a few things like the API key, the client ID, and the client secret. And then I need to also specify a couple of authorized redirect URIs that will enable the Google Calendar to contact my website. Now there's a link right above this section that will take you to the Google Cloud Console page where you need to either sign up for a Cloud Console account or log in to create and enable the Google API. So if you click on this link, it'll take you over to the Cloud Computing Services platform. Now again, as I've mentioned, if you don't have an account with Google Cloud yet, you can click this button to get started for free. But if you already have a Google account, you can head over to the sign in button and sign in to your Cloud Platform account. So once you've created your account, or logged into your Google Console account, you'll be directed to the API and Services page where you can now go ahead and enable APIs and services. But first and foremost, it is important to note that you need to have a project to which you'll assign this Google Calendar API to that will then communicate with your website. So if I click on the drop down arrow, it'll open up an area where I can select a project that I've already created. And if you don't have a project, you can click on the New Project option which will take you to a page where I can now create a new project specifically for this. I already have a project created called Python Tutorials and I'll actually use this account or this project to enable the API for my website. So next I'll do the Enable APIs and Services. So I'll click on that button. It'll then take me to the dashboard where I can select one of multiple Google APIs available. But in this instance, we're looking specifically for the Google Calendar API. So I'll select that option. And then it'll bring me to the page where I need to enable this API. So I'll click on Enable. With the API now enabled, I head back over to the API and Services page. And I need to create a couple of things. As we mentioned before, if I go back here, I need to create an API key as well as generate some authorization logins. So if I'm back on the page, I'll go to the Create Credentials option. I'll click that. And first things first, I'll create a new API key. So I'll click the API key option. And then it creates the API key for me, which I now have the option to restrict the key to unauthorized use. Now, what does that mean? It effectively just means that this particular API at the moment is open, can be used for any API uh, that Google has. However, I want to restrict the usage of this API for the Google Calendar API only. So I'll go ahead and click the Restrict Key option, which then takes me to the page where I need to specify what this API key is for. So I'll go ahead and I'll just type in a name. We'll call this Calendar Integration. The application restrictions at the moment is none, but I do want to restrict the key. So I'll select that and I'll open the drop down and I'll scroll down to the Google Calendar API. I'll select that and hit OK and save. 
Back on the credentials page, you'll see that there's a green check mark next to this API key that I've created. I've got the API restriction on, and there I've got the API key. So I can go ahead and copy that API key, head back over to my settings page, and into the Google Calendar integration section, I'll go ahead and paste that API key in. Now next up, we need to create the authorization details. So back onto the API services area under the credentials, I click on create credentials again, but this time I click on the OAuth client ID section. Once in that section, you need to select the application type. In this instance, it's a web application since it's for my website and I'll give it a name. We'll call it Biotnet Calendar Integration. And I need to specify a few things, which we've mentioned before. So the authorized JavaScript origins, that is really the website or the location that Google needs to contact for this API, which is your web URL. And then the authorized redirect URI is this URL over here, which I need to copy and paste. So I'm gonna go ahead, select that, copy, and move back over to this area and I'll add the URI. And for the JavaScript origins, I'll click on add URL. And over here, I will go over to my web browser and I'll just copy the URL where this form will be based. I'll paste that in and click create. Now that it's created the OAuth client details, I've got the client ID and I've got the secret, which I can now go ahead and copy these into the Biotnet settings. I'll go ahead and do so now. With all of the required information now filled into the settings, I need to go ahead and save settings, but also authorize this website for the use of this Google Calendar API. So once I've saved the settings, you'll see that there's now an option available to authorize these API information. So I'll go ahead and click on authorize. It'll take me to my Google sign-in page where I now need to use the sign-in information that I have for my Google account. I'll click on that, I'll fill in my password, and then it brings up a message that says this Google app hasn't been verified. So very simply, I click on advanced. I go down to the link at the bottom where it says, go to the URL that you've specified. It currently says that it's unsafe, but don't worry. That's just because your credentials have not been verified yet. So I'll click on the link. It'll bring me back to the properties where I need to specify what type of access do I want to provide on the, on the integration with my website. So I'll go ahead and I'll select both of these. I'll click continue. And your site should now be authorized with the Google Calendar API key. With the integration settings now out the way, I can now get into the building of the actual form that needs to integrate with the calendar. So over on my Elementor backend, I've created a very simple form template that specifies an appointment, a location, a date and time, some guest details, and a book now button. Now again, very important as you've seen from previous PyTnet forms videos, it is critically important to specify a form ID that is consistent across each of the fields that I have in this form. Now what you name your field ID is entirely up to you, but the form ID needs to be consistent to allow the submit button to recognize all of the information that I'm submitting in this form. So right at the top, I've got a very simple radio button option where I've got four appointment options. Next, I've specified a very similar field, which is for the location, and this appointment could be in three different locations. I have the date and time option, which is currently set as a date type field. But what's rather important to note in this area is because this is a booking form, it's not only the date that's important, but also the time of the booking. Now there's a slightly different setting that I need to apply in this instance. And if you scroll down to the area where I've got my date configurations, you can see that the default value is currently set to my current date. The date format is by default. I can change the date format here if I want to. I can change the time format if I want to but it is currently set to the current date anytime someone opens up the form. Now the next option is a bit of customized code that the form will use to recognize using the flat picker custom options. I need to enable that and I need to paste this snippet of code in to enable the time that'll allow the API to capture the time and the date from this date field and populate it accordingly in my Google Calendar. Next up, I've got some guest details, which is very simple. A couple of form fields, that is just a normal text field here. I've got an email field here that'll capture the guest's email. 
and I have a phone number for you that will capture the guest's uh, phone number. And then lastly, I need to bring all of this together with the submit button. So I've created a book now submit button here. And if I go over to the settings, I can then see the form ID, which is the same. And if I head over to the actions after submit, there's really two things. One, I want to be able to send an email after this booking form is submitted. But I also obviously want to integrate it with the Google Calendar. So with the Google Calendar option selected, you'll now get an additional option down here for the Google Calendar integration settings. So if I open that up, first things first, I'll enable Google Calendar. And then there's a couple of fields that I need to populate that will then generate the information in the calendar entry. So there's a summary field, a start and an end date. And the start and an end date is there because I also have the option back on the date field, if I just go and deselect this, I also have the option to use a date range for an appointment that may run over a number of days. But I'm not gonna do that in this example, so we'll just go back to the default setting, which is just the date and time of a specific day. So back then over to the calendar integration. So I've got the start date, the end date, I've got the attendee's name, which I capture from this field, the email address from there, um, the phone number is not necessary, but I've got it in any way and I'll receive the phone number via email. Now the description field is where I need to capture what this event is all about. You can see that I've used the select event field, which is the same here, but I've also used the same field ID for the summary. And what that'll do is, is basically just replicate the name of this appointment in the Google Calendar entry title, as well as the description. Now I can change these around, whichever fields you use to capture the description in the summary, you'll go ahead and enter those here. I have a location specified for this appointment as well, so I've taken the select a location field ID and I've put that into the location. Now I've got two options that I can enable to remind the user about his appointment. I can use a pop-up on the website, or I can use the email. So since the email information is captured in this form, I select the email option, and then I can also specify how long in advance do I need to remind this person of the appointment, and that'll also flag up a notification in my Google Calendar. Very basic settings, I'll go ahead and update the page, and now back on the front end of my website, let's take a look at how this works. So very simply, I'll select an appointment, I'll select a location, I'll specify the date and time. So I've got a date, let's pick this date. I'm happy with a 12 p.m. appointment. I'll specify some details. So let's call this person John Doe. He's got an email address and we'll specify a phone number. I'll click on the book now option. It'll prompt me with a message to say that your booking has been created successfully. Now I can customize this message as well if I want to. Heading back over to my Google Calendar, I will now see this appointment in the right place, in the right time slot in my Google Calendar. If I click on the calendar option, it opens up the calendar information saying that this is the appointment, that's where the location is, this is the person, etc. Now what's important to notice here is, you'll see that it will by default create this in a default calendar. Now this option is not available yet to add the booking to any additional calendars that I've created, but we hope to see that soon in an upcoming release. Let's now take a look at the second form option. Very similar to the last one with the major exception that here I've also included a booking table which will capture information and also write it to my booking form database on the website. So I've got the select date field right at the top which is very similar. I've got the booking form, you'll note that that's slightly different to the one I had before because this is a different form. I've got the date option and similarly to the last form, I've configured the flat picker custom options with the snippet below to capture the date and time from this form. Next up, I have the booking table. Now it's very important to notice here and you'll, you'll see a commonality. However, unfortunately, these two fields are not directly linked. And that's for two reasons. One being, I want to use the booking table in this instance to capture the title of this booking and write it to my Google Calendar entry but I also want to write the information to my booking form database. Now, even though these are unrelated, I've gone in and put a subtle message in there that these two fields need to be used in conjunction. So I'll effectively go and select the date and time and then also select the corresponding time in the booking table. Now, what this will additionally allow me to do is it'll also show me because of the information that's captured in the booking form database, it'll show me on the particular date 
that I'm selecting whether that time slot is available or not. So let's take a look at how that's configured in the booking table. So if I select the booking table option, got my booking form ID, I've got the short code that's generated and the date type here is a date picker, which will allow me to style this in this way. And I've got some text here. I'm just gonna deselect the multiple selection option, but that's there to allow me to select multiple options here. But in this example, I don't really wanna do that because I'm booking a single appointment. I've got some text that I can specify in terms of the number of available slots so that I can see there's a single slot available for each of these appointments. And if the appointment is fully booked, it'll show me the sold out text, which is currently not available. Now I can show the slot, which is the slot number over there. I've got the title, obviously, but I can also show the price. Now, the price option allows me to integrate this booking table with my payment gateways. So I can charge people for appointments by integrating it with Molly, PayPal or Stripe payments. I've not covered that in this example, but take a look at a future video that will be coming out very soon on how the different payment gateways work and how it integrates with, uh, with forms. So back onto the booking table then, I've created a number of different appointment or booking options where I give it a slot ID, the number of slots that are available. So here I can see there's only one slot available and I give it the title. And this title is obviously the title that I want to pull through into my Google Calendar integration. So I've created one, I've duplicated it a couple of times and I've given it different descriptions. Down to the guest details, again here, I've just got some basic fields, a text field, email field, and phone number field, where I capture the guest's information. And then on the submit button, slightly different. Again, here I've got the form ID, which is common across all these fields. And under the actions after submit area, I wanna send an email when the form is submitted. I wanna capture a booking, and I also want to write this to my Google Calendar. If I go down to the booking option, you can see that I've got the short code, which is the short code of this one here. And I've pasted that in to capture the booking from that table. And under the Google Calendar section, very similar to before, it's enabled. However, now I'm taking for the summary field, the name of the appointment, I'm taking the data from the description or the title that is in my booking table. So heading back over there, Google Calendar integration for the summary, I'm taking the short code for the booking table, but I'm also using that for the description. The date type is date and time, has to be the same for the previous form as well, so that it captures the date and time and puts it in the right place in my calendar. I've got my date fields, which is this over here for the start and the end date. I've got the guest information, I've got the reminder method and the reminder time. With all of that information configured, let's hit update and see how it works on the front end. So on the front end, I'll go and select a date. So I'll pick the 9th and I'll also specify, bearing in mind the available time slots that I have, I'll go ahead and select 9th and I'll make that a 3 p.m. booking. So I'll just fill in the date and time and make sure that that's p.m. and I select the corresponding booking slot I fill in the details and I click on the book now button. Now what you'll immediately see once I've submitted the form is because the data is written into that form database, it also immediately shows me which appointments are now available for this particular date. So if I go back to a different date, you'll see that that slot is available. If I jump back to the 9th, because of the information is captured, I cannot make a selection on this particular booking. And that's really the difference between this form and the previous form, is it just gives me a bit of extended functionality. Even though these two are not interlinked, it still gives me that ability to check availability on certain bookings on this form. Now, if I move over to my Google Calendar, again here, you can see that the calendar entry that I've created is sitting in my Google Calendar. So I've got the title, which it pulls through from the booking table. I've got the date, I've got the person that has booked the appointment and everything works as intended. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful or helpful, remember to give us a thumbs up and if you really liked it, leave us a comment below. Bye for now.